Like, I feel like you treat your first kid the way that you treat like a package marked fragile, and you treat your second kid like the same way that UPS would treat that package. <laughs> and I just throw it on the truck, who cares? There's more packages. I started doing stand-up in 2009. It was Ash Wednesday, and I remember that because I went on stage with the little ashes that you get at church, because I thought it was gonna be edgy. I bombed harder than anybody probably ever in their first time. I didn't get a single laugh. You need that delusion. So many guys say that, you need that delusion to keep going in stand-up, or you would quit if you realized how bad you were. Confidence is everything with a new bit. If you go up there and you're kind of weak with it, or you're not strong to your points, or the punches you want to hit, People can sense that. They can sense if you're unsure about it. They can sense if you're not totally committed to it. But it's also tough to have that confidence without the joke working a few times first. I've been going to the gym lately. I've been doing that. Uh, I walked into the gym the other day and uh, right away I just saw this bigger guy that had a t-shirt on. It just said, my warm up is tougher than your workout. And I was like, ugh, oh, he's right. And I left. <laughs> that was it for the gym. You know, there's a real difference between the open mics in a lot of cities that people will do and then a club open mic where you have a real paying audience. You know, if you're at an open mic with all comedians and you try a new joke and it hits, that means you might have a funny joke, but it also means you might have a horrific joke that only appeals to that tiny segment of the population that uh, is into stuff like that. I mean, there is nothing in comedy that's better than a new joke that you're excited about that works. If you have a new bit that is killing, there's nothing better. Because it's something where you know there's a kernel of something that's different, a kernel of something that you can make funny, and you kind of just stay after it relentlessly. And then when it turns into something big, uh, yeah, there's, there's no better feeling than that. Of course, then you also have to deal with taking the risks of trying new material a lot. Because you're never going to have those highs if you do the same set over and over and over. So you have to be willing to bomb. And it's the worst feeling in comedy, obviously. That can get out of hand pretty quickly to when you just get the flop sweat and you're fighting for your life up there, but it's over. Like when you're bombing, that'll, it's horrific, you know? You'll think about it for days and it'll stay with you for a while, but that's good too, because that'll motivate you to work harder and to kind of push past that. I am a good, I'm a good parent, I feel like. Probably not after that joke, nobody's gonna buy it. Uh, when my second daughter was born, we have to, all my friends gave me the same piece of advice. They all said the same thing. They said, you have to treat both your kids exactly the same. Okay, well, our first daughter was born in New York City at a hospital on Madison Avenue. So we named her Madison, which is cute. Our second daughter was born here in Cincinnati at a hospital on Dick Smith Avenue. <laughs> That's not a cute name for your daughter. Dick Smith just sounds like someone that sells sex toys at a renaissance fair or something. <laughs> That's not a cute... You guys get it. I have a ridiculous notebook system that makes no sense for a lot of people, but uh, I've got four different notebooks that I use regularly. The first is just a pretty basic a composition book. And just for, for like free writing, that kind of stuff. And anything I like stays over here on the left. At that point, it goes to the little notebook. Anytime I have like a good joke that I'm working on or just uh, a premise or an idea, I put it in this. Then we got the uh, reporter's notebook, which is good just to take the open mics, things like that, which will get like set lists or tags, things like that. Usually under a set list, I'll write kind of the things that I was most excited about. I also record all my sets like you should. Everybody should be doing audio. But once I kind of have a bit figured out a little bit more, it'll go in the nicer notebook where I'm not just tearing out pages for open mics and stuff. And then I can do it on stage and have none of them work and then start again at ground zero. I'm gonna bring up your next comic. He is headlining on Thanksgiving weekend. He's really funny. Give it up for him, guys. It's Mark Shalafu. Keep it going for Austin, who may or may not be the door guy. So tonight, um, probably the first thing I'm gonna do, Fiona's dad is dead. I don't know if you've heard. I hope I'm not breaking the news to you. But it's, there's something funny to me about like the whole Fiona craze. 
and I'm trying to draw a parallel between the Fiona craze and the fact that Cincinnati is a city on the rise. I honestly, I didn't even know Fiona had a dad until I read that he passed away. I just thought she came straight from heaven, you know? <laughs> and she belongs. Some people think that, uh, that it's bad that our famous celebrity in this town is a baby hippo. I think it's bad that she only had to pass Nick Lachey to earn those honors. <laughs> That's a pretty low bar for a hippo to cross. She's a baby hippo, you know? She's cute, but uh, people have gone a little bit overboard with it, so I'm just gonna steer into that and kind of take it to an exaggerated level. Some people, who won't be named, like to bring up all the stuff from the past that the zoo has been through. But again, those are terrible people, so we shouldn't get that. Uh, you know, those people are stuck in the past. Talking about how they're still afraid of OTR. They still think that like OTR is scary and that Pete Rose is a good person. You know? <laughs> that is definitely not gonna win me any favors. Uh, people have weird reactions to animals. And then I'm gonna kind of draw the parallel between that to uh, just how people respond to animals in different ways. From that go into a story about my daughter's soccer game from a few weeks ago. The start of that joke might be a problem, but I know by the end of it, it'll get a laugh. Uh, hopefully. Now that I said that, it probably will eat it. My daughter is four. We, uh, she plays soccer, and we were leaving a game a few weeks ago. And there was a kid on the other team who had a big dog, and my daughter asked if she could pet it. And the kid was like, yeah, you can pet it. He's going to heaven today. <laughs> I was not ready for that, because right away my daughter was like, wait, why did he say that? What does he mean? I was prepared to give her orange slices, not to talk about mortality and dogs and stuff. Uh, so I decided like the best way to handle that is just to be honest with her. So I said, honey, this is what happens when you don't try hard enough at soccer. She's got to learn. <laughs> I'm raising champions. She's got to learn. Now those are personal things that came like straight from my life. When I talk about like my daughter and the, the dog thing, I'm going to talk about something that my friend said to me because my wife and I both work. My wife and I both take care of our kids, so he was like, well, how are your kids gonna know who's the mom, who's the dad? So I have some stuff on that. I work from home some, I, you know, I also watch my kids. My wife works part-time and also watches the kids. And I was telling my friend about this, he was like, no offense, but how are your friends gonna know who's the mom and who's the dad? It's like, I thought I made that pretty clear when I bought these New Balance shoes, you know? <laughs> what, these shoes? These are New Balance shoes. It's a new low for me, even as a dad. Case closed. Also, who's the mom, who's the dad? It's 2017. We can both be the mom if I want, you know? <laughs> we can both be the mom. What's... It's easy for my friend, because he can just remember, like his kids, it's simple for them, because they can just remember that mom is the one that we live with. <laughs> dad is the one that throws <laughs> second Christmas. <you> know? <laughs> I'm trying to get some stuff in order for my headlining week here at Go Bananas. So for me, with a set tonight, my goal is to see what on this list I can really turn into something. Now my friend, he said that he can't work out of the gym unless there's a hot girl on the machine in front of him. He said that she's like the carrot at the end of the stick. And I was like, you should not say that out loud because you sound like a psychopath. <laughs> you can't exercise unless you think you're chasing a woman? <laughs> At least tell the woman that so she has new motivation for her workout. <laughs> That's it for me. Thank you, guys. Let's go. Your set just ended. What are your initial thoughts? Uh, yeah, I, you know, I made some choices that I've got to live with after that. The dog joke worked, so I was happy with that. So I know I'll be able to get something out of that someday. It was an honest set where I went into it with some things I wanted to get done some of which I did, some of which ate it completely, but uh, out of like that, I did seven minutes tonight. Out of that seven minutes, there's probably like two minutes of it that I'll be able to use. You just have to go on stage. If you're afraid of doing it, the thing that I would tell new people is go to an open mic, because what you need to see are guys that suck at comedy, because then you're gonna see that and say, oh, I can be that bad. You know, that'll give you the courage you need to get on stage for the first time. And then after that, you just have to keep going up. Because you're going to take it on the chin for a long time. In a lot of ways, you never fully get past that. But uh, really, the, the biggest thing you can do is just keep getting on stage. Every time you go out, just trying to be a little bit better. If you keep getting on stage, you'll figure it out, basically.